I'm happy that um, that you guys are on. Uh, honestly, I got to tell you, and, and you know, I've, I, I say this almost with every podcast that I record that, you know, obviously I had the chance of meeting with all these different people and they're doing exceptional things kind of behind the scenes. And the whole purpose of this podcast was to do just that, right? To, to create a platform where I can kind of bring these people from the backstage onto the front and explain nice. what they do. And almost every episode, I, I, you know, I'm happy that people decide to do that because almost every person that, I, that I've decided to have on has had this remarkable journey that I think deserves to be kind of uh, out, in the, out in the public, right? So I'm super happy that you guys are on. And uh, like you said... Well, we're, we're happy to you. You asked us. It was a good Thanks opportunity so to see you too. And, and thank uh, you, know, you again I, I, honestly, for all... I, I miss you guys, honestly. And, you know, I follow you I online. And uh, there was a time where, you know, we, we were kind of more in touch <laughs> on a yes. daily basis. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, I, I'm, I'm happy that you're on. And I got to tell you, I've, you know, I've been having such a hard time trying to figure out, you know, how, you know, within the window of, you know, however long this is going to last, the, the, this episode is going to last, uh, how do I attempt to even demonstrate to the, to the viewers or to the listeners um, the magnitude of your contribution, you know, and the greatness of, of the work that you've accomplished and especially oh. with all the children that you've worked with. And uh, I, I still don't know how I'm going to do it, <laughs> but oh. you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll take it. Uh, we'll take it from, uh, from the beginning, I guess. And, uh, and oh, you know, we'll you're too through. kind. You're too nice. Well, we not, you. It's not that. I mean, it's, it's true to some extent. And I know that you, you're, you're both two humble people. Uh, but the reality is, and you know, I, I remember, obviously I knew you guys way before politics. I think everyone in our little community kind of knew whoever is kind of standing out. Right. And I mean, from, uh, from a long time, uh, you guys, you know, you were involved in the music scene. So everyone kind of knew who you were and even us for a while. I mean, you know, we had a little band, we organized little concerts here and there shows. So we kind of had that reflex of following who's doing what, you know? Uh, so I, I kind of knew you, but I got to know you more personally once I started working in politics. And I remember, uh, I remember, I think I even remember the time we were at, uh, at some, uh, event of the greek community and you know here you guys come out and you had this choir of you know students and i'm thinking to myself okay this is new okay and and i'm not sure when and we're going to talk about when you guys got involved in everything but this is my reality this is how i remember it uh, and i thought okay this is new because I, the choirs the, the student choirs back in the day <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to be bashful, and I don't want to. You know, I don't want to say anything bad about the people because they, they obviously had very good intentions, and they wanted to to have these student choirs. But it was nothing. It had nothing to do with what I had seen. Right? I mean, finally, someone had understood the concept of how a choir works. Right? And that there's different sections. I mean, we never learned what. Uh, you know, a harmony was, we, our, our, an octave was, we didn't have sections, you know, baritones, tenors, and so forth. Like, we didn't have that, you know? We were like 30, 40 kids, we were dumped in this, you know, they, they made two or three rows and everybody just sang, right? And, and finally, someone understood the concept. And uh, even though you don't really expect elementary students to kind of understand or to be musically inclined, like, I mean, that's the reflex, right? When you see like an eight or, you know, an eight, nine, 10 year old kid, that's not the image that you have. And yet that's what you had accomplished. And I remember thinking, okay, th this is, this is spectacular. You know, there oh, are, wow. yeah, no, you know, well, there, this, there, yeah. there are professionals that have taken uh, over the choir and it shows, right. I mean, it, it demonstrates what you can do. Uh, and from then on, I mean, you know, I remember kind yeah. of being in touch with you constantly and all the projects that you guys came up with, and, you know, we're going to talk about that. And I think that's for me was like the eye opener, you know? Well, we couldn't yeah. have it any other way. And like you said, being professionals, it would have been, um, sacrilegious to, to do it any other way. We, we were trained to do it this way and, and we passed it on. Uh, choirs are very, um, popular and big and this is why like you said you see a lot of choirs happening but nothing to the extent that we do it's because you don't have like you say a professional um i mean there's tons of choirs out there with professional uh, conductors and we happen to be uh, one of the few in our in our community uh so we, yeah we wouldn't have it any other way 
and we appreciate that you recognize this. And we and thank we appreciate, you too. <laughs> yeah, we thank you for your contribution. Not only that, but also that uh, you have to realize that a choir for any school or church is its soul. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of the, especially the Greek schools, not having a music program, uh, did not have an opportunity to show showcase themselves outside uh, the school, uh, apart from a sport or apart from a math competition where a kid could get. Um, an award. Nothing promotes a school like a well-trained choir, mm-hmm. and uh, and being in a choir, singing in a choir, whether you are an adult or as a child, is is extremely a huge benefit to your health. You know, like they, they've they've seen you've seen a, a million studies, like how the correct breathing helps you out, how socially being singing with other people helps you out. The more advanced choirs, they've made tests, and they and uh, the more advanced choirs, they've even they've even seen that. After a while, when you have an advanced choir singing, the heartbeats of the actual singers begin to sink. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, and then you learn a whole lot of things. You learn discipline, you learn empathy, you learn history, you learn languages. You, uh, it's, it's, it's such an important part. And it's an easy thing to put together. You do not need to buy instruments. You do yeah. not need to do all that. You just use your own natural voice and you get in. And in the case of Socrates choirs, we even, uh, because most of our other choirs were audition kids because we do big projects. And then, but in Socrates, we accept everyone in. And you see some people that are not very well in tune in the beginning, how the kids grow to sing in tune, you know? And, and, and that is such a big, big uh, help. I mean, it looks really, we love seeing that. And we love seeing kids go into music because of our. No, our no, absolutely. Choirs, you know? How you know? I, I just I I just want to know your story, right? Uh, like the journey that you guys have been through. How did this all start for you? Because it doesn't seem, at least in our community, and maybe even uh, you know in our society here in Montreal mm-hmm. or Quebec, it doesn't seem like a popular inclination to to you know to to follow like not music because I know that there's music schools and you know people follow that but to go into that specific genre of opera that you guys like to be classically trained uh, how does that start with you like wh- what's the story behind all this well as you know uh, um, I was born in Montreal but I grew up in Greece and I came back to Montreal when I was uh, 19 so we have a career path with Maria that was separate initially and then when we met up these paths started to converge so it converged artistically and in our personal lives by getting married Mm -hmm. so initially we had our own paths i mean maria finished mcgill i mean she'll tell you uh, her part but i i've i um i when i finished likio in greece i came back here i got into concordian music i finished back in in in, uh, concordia and music and uh, graduate uh, diploma also in concordia uh, and then uh, before we started working with Maria, we, we had our own careers. We had uh, our opera concerts. We had our, 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 our careers together. And then when we got married with Maria, all this just happened, started happening as a team. And our actually our biggest accomplishments uh, happened when we were a team. Yeah. yeah. So Maria can, can speak a little bit about her beginnings and then I'll... Uh, and then I'll My beginnings, that. right? <laughs> well, uh, getting into singing uh, actually was came much later because I started as a as a as a pianist and singing actually back in the, in when my youth, so in the eighties, seventies, uh, it's not like what it is today with the uh, you know the voice and X yeah. Factor and so that wasn't so popular. Everybody sang and whatnot, but. I think it really mattered if you were an instrumentalist first. So anyways, I got into music. The The, the style was the, I don't know if you remember, the Lowry organ, the three manual organ yeah. in the 70s. So that was my very first instrument. So I got uh, I got really excited with that and then continued with music because I think that was my passion and, uh, and that's how it progressed. But I started in pop music and then my teacher said, look, if you want to take music seriously, you should go into the classics because that's like a 500 year old instrument you're doing dealing with now piano and keyboard. And so so you made me realize like, oh, my God, there's more to this instrument than just pop music. There's like, you know, Bach and Beethoven and Mozart. And so that was like a whole uh, new world for me, which was great. And, and that's and that's how I got into music. 
And so I finished the McGill Conservatory first, then I went to CJEP, and then went into McGill. But along the way, it was not only just uh, learning about music, I wanted to, you know, share it with others and, 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 you know, perform. And so I got jobs like demonstrating pianos or playing in a restaurant uh, uh, and then um, teaching, of course. And then when I met Dimitri, you know, we, we started exploring more about what we can do with our music. And But you see, these things, you never... You can't plan. It's not like a medicine where it's fixed. Okay, you do your, you know, you, you do your studies and you do your internship and then you, you work in the hospital. This music is so, uh, it's like a lottery. Mm -hmm. So you never know <laughs> what's going to, you know, it's because I have a lot of colleagues that studied music, but nobody continued. And I don't judge them. It's because it's really, it is a lottery. Yeah, and my, a and my winning to, ticket yeah. was with Dimitri because we put our two heads together. And not only that, we met other musicians and them too, they found that they needed help. Like we met a Greek musician who, who inspired us to do our first uh, musical opera with the children's choir. And that was uh, 2003, Dimitri. I don't yeah, remember. The selfish and that's Yeah, that's how we got into doing our 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 musical uh, books, our children's books. And you see, so it was nothing planned. Everything happened because whoever you met in your life and you got inspirations and whatnot. So, but the basic but the classical, thing, Yeah, the classical mm -hmm. life of, of an opera singer that we were is to basically start auditioning all over the place, uh, do trips. Maria went uh, many times to, to Germany and to Austria. I went to Italy. And then you get an agent and you start uh, singing, starting from small opera houses in Germany and, uh, and, and all that, wherever they take you, and then try to build that. That never interested us too much. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to do, we wanted to have our own baby. We wanted to do our own thing. And although all the classics that we were singing were amazing and we still adore singing them, uh, we wanted to pioneer things. We wanted to do things that were new. And that's what brought us to Chroma Musica, which is uh, the company that we formed in 1999. We started with our first uh, operatic disc called Piangero. And then the purpose of, Pian of uh, Chroma Musica initially is to promote uh, Hellenic classical music and basically promote Hellenic culture uh, initially within the confines of the Greek community. And, but not only. I mean, our first CD, Piangero, has singers from, from all over Montreal and in the orchestra that played were all non-Greeks. So the ultimate project was to eventually open up Hellenic culture to the greater uh, Montreal and Laval area and then to the whole of Canada. Right. Uh, that was our dream. And uh, although we started with four books in Greek initially, and to which Greek mostly everything starts from, from the Hellenic community, of course. I mean, that's our, our core of the existence. Uh, we started with the four Greek books, but then we started expanding and doing books in English. And, uh, and that's when our paths crossed, because that's when, actually, no, we, I think our first, our first project where we collaborated with you and Jerry was To Carnaval Maton Ketonteraton. Oh, right. Which one? Sorry, the Carnaval, wasn't it this? The Greek one is yeah, it, yeah, Jerry in there? Inside. It's yeah, possible. I remember yeah. uh, yes, the yes, 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 yes. Yeah, it yes. is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was the first book that we did uh, together, and after the Carnaval, we opened up. Uh, we, we say, okay, we'll try to do it in we we'll try to do some projects in English and French, um, but already we had started this vocal seminar in the schools that me Maria Maria pioneered it as she did with the voice camp too and then we opened it up and we started getting more schools in which but again you see sorry to interrupt you Dimitri these are all ideas like I said it's uh, that came to us I had parents that, that I was teaching their their kids giving them lessons and the parents would say oh why don't you come to our school and do a choir yeah. So it's funny. I'm I'm really blessed with that because it's really something that I didn't think of. It was just, and it's like, sure. I mean, I mean, the good thing with my character is that I'm never, I never say no. It's like, sure, let me try this. So yeah. it's like, and then, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, just to go back to the to to the to the the beginning of your of your musical career, how 
you know, like I said before, it's not like a natural inclination, especially not in our community. I mean, how were your parents in all of this? How, how was their support? Um, was there a moment where they questioned your intentions? Uh, because, I mean, you know, I grew up in the 80s and back then it was like you're becoming a doctor uh, or an accountant <laughs> or, you know yeah. what I mean? Like stuff that they understood, you know? Yeah. And, it's not yeah. their fault. I mean, they didn't know better. It's just that For they sure. wanted to make sure that you had the best yeah. possible future uh, exactly. for, yourself yeah. and for your family. So for them, yeah. it's it's stuff that they can understand, right? Uh, yeah. So when you tell your parents, I'm, I'm, you know, I want to get classically trained in music, like what was the reaction that came out of that? My, my, I'll start with my, my parents were very supportive, especially my father. Like the moment he found out that, what you can get a doctorate in music go for it because that's what my father not yeah not if it was a doctor it was more like oh music is 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 recognized as a, a higher education it's not right. it's not uh, because yes you're right especially in greece uh the mentality was if you're a musician you're a bohemian you know you're not you're just, you're not taking life seriously. You're just, this is a pastime, but my father's reckon, he says, this is a recognized art. It's, uh, there's so, yeah, go for it, you know? So he wanted his kids uh, to get a higher education. So he goes, and especially uh, for my, in my instance, because I did not excel and not that I didn't, I mean, I was just like lazy by late nature. It's like to study math and sciences. It's like, whoa, no, I couldn't do that. But the moment he saw that, oh, okay, I see her practicing and studying music. Let's push her to do that, you know? So, and that's how, yeah, that's that's why my parents were supportive um, of that. But then after my father was supportive, but at a certain time, he like he would help me. He would be in my lessons, actually taking notes and and but at one point he goes you know what you're 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 going too far i can't catch up with you so you're on your own and yeah. then <laughs> and which is fine yeah you're not going to have you're 16 years old have your dad in you know in yeah. the lesson but not it's so yeah. but um but he was supportive yeah totally wow in my case uh, uh things were a little different uh, being living in greece uh, of course my mother was a m- music lover she loved classical music uh, and my father was in a total different milieu. My father was an air traffic controller. So he, um, uh, but when I did music all my life, I started with piano, then violin. That was my main instrument. And then I went to singing. But uh, <clears throat> when I announced to them that I wanted to become a musician, it wasn't um, as uh, easy as Maria's uh, yeah. situation. Uh, uh, I'm never, I'm not blaming my parents because at the at the time, they were scared that following that route will mean that I would be, I, I would not have a job or I would not be able to, to support myself or whatever. So there was an initial three months of, of strife in the Elias's household. Yeah. Um, but then uh, eventually they saw that I was determined and then uh, my father said, okay, but if you're going to do music, you should do it properly through university. And since you have the Canadian citizenship, uh, you can go back to Montreal, and then I auditioned for Concordia. And actually, that's how I met Maria. She was uh, she accompanied me in the piano for my entrance examinations at Concordia. Okay. Okay. And uh, and then the accepted me the scholarship, and they said, "Okay, please, please come. We we want you." And then my father saw that, and that convinced them. And ever since, uh, my father's have been uh, my parents have had been more than supportive. Uh, and after that, you know, right. but initially it wasn't, it wasn't an easy switch, you know, and uh, like you said, these. Yeah, it think, makes sense, you know, because it's not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, you, you don't have a fixed job. That's the thing, because if you're doing, so, you know, a lot of uh, studies, it's like, OK, at the end of the, the tunnel, you're going to have a job waiting for you. And yeah. as a musician, it, it's not cut dry like that. It's. Uh, yes, you can finish your doctorate and maybe in, and, and, and teach, but we never wanted to um, be stuck in a school environment and, and be a school uh, classroom teacher. We wanted to be first, first and above all uh, performers. I just wanted and, to say, uh, and, yeah. and, uh, and, and Maria agrees with me in that one because we've discussed it many times, that our time in, in university and in the different school that we, we spent was immensely important 
uh, to to learn how to be a performer and, and a musician. Um, so I appreciate my time in, in schooling and in academics and, and university for that reason. We, I couldn't have done it without that. But the actual degree means nothing. Yeah, for sure. Right? I mean, not a one single job that we got and then subsequently with our company and our successes right after, not one ever needed the paper. Mm -hmm. We needed the training inside the school and especially in Concordia and McGill, we had great teachers. We had a lot of opportunities for concert, but the degree in the end meant nothing. Yeah. What you do with your career is what, what makes it, right? what makes you needed you know how how was the market back then in montreal or quebec or even you know in canada at large uh, within <clears throat> the um the opera genre very difficult yeah, yeah. i mean uh, there is a lot of clicks in that milieu and uh, uh and uh, to get jobs or to get paid to do what you do is 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 a hard is a hard thing. So that's why for me and Maria it was important to create our own opportunities, and that's what made uh, that's what made a difference right. in, in our in our careers. We said we we're going to make our own company, and then we're going to approach this differently. We want to do new works, new composers, stuff that has never been performed before. Because if we want to go perform Maida or if we want to go perform a Verdi opera or or Puccini or whatever. Uh, there is already that has already been done a lot around you know and we were not in the mood to put all that energy uh into just doing auditions and and wait to, to because that's what happens with a lot of these the, the, the kids that graduate from mcgill and concordia and all the big music schools they think okay i'm going to be audition and then the agent will discover me and then i'll become famous so most of the times it doesn't work like that unless yeah. unless you are like superstar like a, yeah, like a, a Domingo or whatever, yeah. And, and like maria said i mean back in the day you didn't have all these platforms social media or right. the opportunities on tv with all these uh you know singing contests yeah. that you can you know try to participate in and in any case i think you know what you guys have you probably wouldn't fit in there anyway you know what i mean uh they look for a more marketable person more in the pop rock kind of scene Someone and, and, even today, and, you see them showing up and they're singing opera. They don't really yeah. advance in these competitions, right? So, um, and, and it's amazing how back then. Well, back then, I mean, it's not so long ago, but I mean, considering how the technology and how these um, shows and everything have evolved so quickly, uh, it, it's it's amazing to me how you had that presence of mind to think kind of outside the box and not follow the traditional route where, and you had it, right? I mean, you were all over the world, you were singing, uh, you had these opportunities and yet you said, you know, maybe we can start our own um, kind well, of journey. The, yeah. Those, those kind of competitions, uh, the like uh, American Idol or America has got talent and, and all that style of competition is a double edged, edged sword. Yes, it will give an opportunity for, 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 for young people to sing and, and, and promote, especially the ones that have talent, gives them a platform to show themselves up. But at the same time, uh, they, they promote uh, a wrong type of musical understanding or musical education. They promote the fact that if you're talented, you can just pick up a microphone and go on stage right. and become famous. This is more obvious in the singing world rather than the instrumental world. Uh, to sing is easy. I mean, most of us sing in tune. 99% of people sing in tune. There's a very, very small percentage of tone deaf people. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they say, I'm tone deaf, but they don't just don't like the color of their voice, but they can sing in tune. They can follow a melody. So all these shows that show kids grabbing a microphone, going in front of these judges and becoming famous is, is promoting an idea that you don't have to study for this or that you do not have to do any work or you don't have to discipline yourself. Uh, and that is particular to singing. To be an instrumentalist, to be an instrumentalist, that's a real musician. Yeah. That's the, 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 to learn the guitar, even if you're self-taught, you got to put the hours. Mm -hmm. Don't just pick a guitar and start playing. Yeah. Same for piano, same for everything. So unfortunately, a lot of these shows, although they give those opportunities, many times... They teach us, they teach kids, it's, it's a Lotus, Lotus 649. You pick up a microphone and you're, 
Yeah. Well, it's a bit, it's a business, you know, and you have to understand that these people want to make money. So the easiest way uh, to, 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 to entice the mass is to, yeah, everybody's a singer. It's the same thing with food industry. I mean, you have McDonald's, all these fast food industries. I mean, people, they're feeding the mass, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, how can you track millions of people with, uh, let's say, um, high end foods, like a delicacies, yeah. and, you know, and it's, so all, you wanna... it's all, it's all geared also what sells on TV. You'll only see the very yeah. bad ones that are like a circus thing, yeah. and you only see the very good ones. You yeah. never see right. the, the 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 middle part of, of people that have perhaps worked hard, yeah. but they're not as good as the perfect ones yeah. or as not as bad as the you know. Yeah, it's a, it's a different business, which is something that we never went into. You know, it's nothing. It's not. It's not However, for us. We did yeah. we did produce the um, the theme song for La Voix Junior. Uh, oh yeah. With the choir <laughs> yeah, for the French, uh, for the French. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, we did uh, the, the first time the Lavoie Junior opened. They uh, invited us to create a choir to sing uh, the first, uh, the opening number for ever for oh, all yeah. that season. So, how did they, how did they find how did they find you? Was it because you had that reputation through the schools and uh, kind because of like was apparent someone that because, was involved um, in the production? Yeah, because the uh, the time for flowers, time for snow, the French version uh, was covered by CBC Radio Canada because mm -hmm. it involved uh, 300 students from many many different school boards and schools, and then CBC Radio Canada gave gave our contacts to organizers back then to different uh, agents, and that's how we got to participate three times in the Saint Jean Baptiste parade. We sang yeah. with uh, with Jean Pierre Ferland on stage during the big. Uh, Saint Jean Baptiste celebration, and then we got a call from uh, uh, the the woman that was organizing the uh, the the recording of the of that, uh, and then we learned the song. They kept changing it on us until the last. Oh my God, it was a, such a <laughs> such an interesting experience. Completely different. Like one day before, we actually had to walk into the studio of La Voix. They change the key and they change the melody. <laughs> so in, in, we have these hundred kids in front of us, ready to record. And then, and then I said to the, and then I said to the engineers, I said, I need five minutes to teach them the new melody. Yeah, for sure. It happened right there, just just before the recording. So that's yeah, how the, the it was. Um, it was one of those. Uh, what do you call them? Those um, those groups there. Those uh, you know they put in front of. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah. They put in front of a group of people just to test. Okay, is this good? Is this bad? You know how it is in in show business. Oh yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, I know, I know. Uh, I know what you're talking about. The, uh, the tester, uh, uh, the survey, uh, like polling yeah. and. Uh, yeah, the, oh man, the, the, test group. I, I, know, I know, I know. Which one. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 I know. But the goddamn, and it's whatever. Uh, yeah, that's what. That, that's probably what it was, right? It was. Uh, yeah. It was like, okay, yeah, it doesn't stick. Um, so we got to change it up. Yeah. Uh, tell yeah, me, yeah. tell me how this collaboration started. Uh, you know, I know that you guys, you know, you said that you had this this dream of kind of doing things differently, and yeah. to and to you know educating the people when you know in music and uh, choirs or in production yeah. and stuff like that. How how does the the collaboration start with the schools? You started first with the the, the Greek schools or the community, and then you went on to others, or was it the other way around? No, Maria started this. Uh, I'm talking for you, Maria. You can you can take this. Well, I was approached by um, a parents committee uh, because I I was teaching their kids and and they they said, oh, we have a great idea. We want to, we want to start a choir. And In Garden View Elementary. That's how they approached me. Pardon me. In Garden View Elementary. Garden View. That's the first school. Yeah, Garden yeah. View Elementary. Yeah, there was like a staff of like ten moms, and all of them I had their kids as my my private students. So they entrusted me to do that, knowing like you know that I had. Um, that I was educated about music and whatnot. So I appreciated that too. And like I said, that I never say no to anything. If anything is related to music, I, I, I go for it. My first job was, it was, was piano demonstrator. I would work in, like I said, restaurants, uh, teaching, anything to do with music. I never had any other job in my life. My very first job when I was a kid was, was teaching my neighbor piano. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, so anything to do with music, I was all for it, you know? And, and after, uh, uh, yeah, after... so that's, yeah, that's how I started I, my first, my first experience with a, with a choir. But at that, 
they wanted to introduce it to all the schools. So I had like 120 kids. Oh my God. Like teaching uh, 120 kids in a gymnasium. Every time the session would finish, I would lose my voice. Just sure. yeah. <laughs> I never After, thought about, uh, uh, and it was harder back then because I didn't have the technology of, um, uh, of using, uh, YouTube and, and karaoke and, stuff. The, and, uh, sorry, the karaoke files, right? Anything electronic form. So I still have the analog system with cassettes, and wow. so I would, yeah, I would, I would uh, record on my keyboard through my stereo uh, cassette player. Uh, my the accompaniment of the music there was a lot of work involved, so it was not. So you see how much it's it's how much education, uh, yeah, involved. Uh, not just, you know, I'm going to teach a choir, but I just ha- I had to learn. Oh, my God, I have to. I'm going to accompany these kids with what music. Yeah. So I had to I had to. Yeah. Like record my accompaniment on the keyboard and then transfer to the cassette. And then I have the kids sing on top of that. Uh, so I learned a lot about things, learning about MIDI files. And uh, so that's another thing in technology. Thank God to, with, with technology. I mean, we still have to learn about that, but we were blessed to with technology. Sure. And so after Marina's we, garden view, we, since I started helping her out once, so we got more involved with each other. Uh, then, uh, then the Greek school started. Uh, we got approached by the by the Hellenic community of Greater Montreal to start choirs in all the schools, in most of the schools. We started with SOC 2, with SOC 3, SOC 5, and we started the choirs then. And then after that, it started branching to other EMSB schools. Uh, and uh, and now we have 12 different choirs and, and schools. But the program itself also advanced with it. Initially, it was just singing, but then it became also singing and putting on a show. And then it became... Uh, not just putting on a show, but putting a full musical on, like in Garden View, we did full musicals with all the dialogues and costumes and sets. Ten thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar productions that that the parents committee would pay, you know, and uh, with costumes and uh, hundreds and hundreds of kids were involved. And then after that, we we started offering the schools that we were teaching these big projects with the children's book CDs, which right. was uh, which was the pinnacle, I would say, of the. Of our of our uh, right. Involvement. How how is it working with so many kids? Because you know I have two, and sometimes I kind of feel like I want to sneak out and <laughs> and just let them do whatever they want in the house. Well, uh, <laughs> that's that's you. Like I say to the parents, like, oh, you have all these kids. I said, look, guys, this we have the fun job. You guys, you're you have the nitty gritty. You you mold them, you 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 raise them, and you bring us the best part. <laughs> So For one hour. We, have it, we have it good. I mean, we have we have their talents. We, we have it good. And we appreciate the parents. A lot of times we thank the parents for that because yeah. we know yeah, it's it hard work. For them. I mean, exactly. raising kids. Yeah, we I said, you know, they, they 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 appreciate what we do, but I said, no, guys, it's what you you guys, you have the nitty-gritty. We we have the we have the you we have the best part of, of your kid, you know. So uh but it's you're a, a performer thing. too, yeah. you know, in front of the kids, you gotta be a performing seal. Uh, if you're boring, you lose them. So we 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 have a lot of jokes. We do a lot of jokes with them. Uh, you know, uh, fart jokes and uh, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, it has to be part room. of the pro- yeah. exactly. It has to be yeah. part of the program. You know, now, like, do, do, yeah. do you select these kids or you just take any kid that is even remotely? Depends interested? on the school. Depends on the school. In Socrates, for example, we we take everyone, but all the other schools we do auditions because the projects that we do require already the kids to have a certain intonation that they can all at least sing in tune and because the projects we do with those children's book cds that you are involved in as well they have a very big range and the children have to sing high so we do not want to damage their vocal cords by accepting kids that have very husky voices that can't go that high you know like you have to be also very very aware we are both members of the national association of teachers of singing and we are bound by a certain uh code uh, uh, when we are dealing with kids, we have to be careful with their voices, they're fragile. And um, and that's why we do auditions and we make sure that first and foremost that their voices are healthy. If we find that they're raspy or whatever, we send them to the voice doctor and make sure they have no nodules, no, no stuff like that. And then once they pass that, we want to make sure that they can sing in tune because again, if a kid can't sing in tune, they hear the other kids, they try to adapt their voice or go high or go low and again, they start pushing. So that's mm-hmm. not good for the, the records too. Right. 
uh, and that's how we choose them in the end. But this must be a crazy learning experience for the kids, right? I mean, uh, and and I don't know how it works with the other schools, but to to put them through this kind of experience, I mean, it must mean something for them, you know, and especially the ones that have this inclination towards music, right? That mm -hmm. enjoy the show, that enjoy the performance. Um, you know, what's, what's the feedback that you get from these kids? We've, oh. we've had a lot of kids. Well, a few kids, I mean, that were inspired by this and literally told us, Oh, I, I went into music because of you guys. And it's like, wow, really? So Uh, you, some kids, you reach out to them, you know, uh, and want to continue into music because of this, these projects, because don't forget, it's not only singing, uh, we, because of these projects, they, they get to sing with an orchestra. So they get to see, you know, an orchestra. So it's like, oh yeah, there's more to music, um, than just singing. So, um, it's a whole, um, Um, yeah, like a whole world for them too. It's not just just go right. here, play the choir and sing. So they get all this multi-level uh, uh, experience. So singing with an orchestra, the recording session, they get to meet the, en the, the engineer at the recording studio. So maybe a kid wants to get into that, you know, uh, right. into the recording uh, business. Uh, so the so they realize there's so much more to to than just singing. But I'll give uh, so you an yeah, example, had, for yeah. example, yeah, for from uh, from the Carnival of uh, Miracles and Monsters, which was the first project that you were involved in. Mm -hmm. um, our kids, of course, were all of Greek origin, not just from Socrates, but uh, kids of Greek origin that could sing in Greek from all over Montreal. And you get to remember these single instances where you had, I had this boy that was singing in the back row and they had their first opportunity to sing with a 40-piece symphonic orchestra. Mm -hmm. And... It, it's a high, right? I mean, it's a high to listen to a symphonic orchestra from yeah. the audience. Can you imagine now being on stage with them and singing with them? And we, we try to hammer that in with the kids. I mean, guys, these professionals have been working all their lives. And you get they get to accompany you while you're singing. For sure. These 40 musicians in front of you. So when an orchestra starts playing, you get that bass from the double basses and, and the brass and the sound is loud and it's, and it's full and it hits you in the chest like a mm -hmm. subwoofer, you know? And... This kid in the back, you know, uh, uh, we left after. And then we find a message in our machine, this kid crying. And he goes, oh, thank you so much. I, can't, I cannot oh. believe this. this. This was such a, this was, and he had a husky voice, actually, but he could go high. That's why he was selected. And he had this husky voice. And thank you so much, Mr. Tim. Like, this Marine, that's <laughs> amazing. I cannot believe. Thank you for this opportunity, you know. That's what you get to remember, you know. And, uh, and that's what makes it worthwhile. And then, then seeing these kids continue and then they put their kids after into music and, uh, you know, you, you, you've done your job. After. Let's talk about the, the, the music, the audio books, uh, the musical yes. audio books, because that's uh, kind of, you know, where I came into the picture with you guys. I mean, I, and I don't know how long you were working and uh, you were directing these choirs before uh, 2007, but I remember... Uh, almost immediately when I started working in politics and we met uh, and, you know, I, I remember, I remember having a meeting with uh, Dimitri at my office and, you know, he was explaining to me the idea of creating, you know, this book and it's going to be a CD book and we're going to record all these songs. So it's going to be a nice little book that the kids and the parents can have and, you know, they can accompany it with, uh, with the music. And to be honest with you, I wasn't really quite sure. I, I was understanding the whole thing and how it was going to go down. Um, I was, the, I, I, I remember being captivated by, by your passion. Right. And I was like, okay, this guy either really knows how to sell his stuff <laughs> or, <laughs> it, or it's really going to be a, 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 an amazing project, right? And there was no way that we could have passed, right? Just, just the fact that you're working already with the community and the kids and you're putting all these things together. Uh, and, you know, that's where I kind of understood the magnitude of this project. Uh, and especially the eye opener for me was when I came to the book launch. I mean, that for me was just, I'm like, okay, this is everything behind, you know, the project, the parents, the kids, the friends, the family, the musicians, uh, just, you know, all this preparation. Uh, and that's where you kind of felt it. Right. And then everything else that came afterwards, it was like, look, we're on board. Just give me a call. Let me know what you need. <laughs> you know? Uh, and that's 
you see that's thank why you we so thank much, you so much you and it's yeah. very memorable because uh, you're a big part of our um of our um our journey with this so and we'll never forget you know because it's people like think, you yeah. look i don't us. think look i i don't it's, think that I, I did much on my end you know i mean no, uh, yeah. <laughs> You're too humble, you know, because this this is something. Yes, fine and dandy. We we love what we do. We're educated. Da 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 da. We do and do. But if there's nobody at the other end to receive it and support it, support there's it. No point. It. It's, it's, it's so finished. we and it's really not and, and it, it, yeah. And it's not just the, the support, but there is the, there is also a, a sense of accomplishment when when you and when Jerry decide to help. Uh, not everyone gets this help. Not everyone gets this recognition. Not everyone right. gets this understanding. So for us, it was it, it was a, it was an award on its own. Just the fact that you guys decided. Yeah, uh, there's there's no meaning to it. it too, right? If you don't, you're not doing these, and it's like you know, you're creating this big supper, and there's nobody there to eat yeah. and enjoy it. So, <laughs> so did, this is for us. Yeah. How did this idea come about creating the the music books? It came in two thousand on four. Yeah. Uh, with the Selfish Giant, which was a Greek uh, book, it was uh, by Nikos Xanthoulis. We had worked with him before. He was uh, he's a very big music music scholar, uh, professor at the university, first trumpet in the uh, in the uh, Athens National Opera Orchestra, and uh, a PhD in composition. He's, a, he's an amazing musician and composer. So he started that. He said, "Guys, we are putting on together a book CD of the Selfish Giant by Oscar Wilde in Greek." I'll show it to you. It's this one here, and uh, a big publishing, a big publisher in Greece, Kedros, is going to. That's, that's the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now. yeah. And um, he says, uh, "We uh, we will uh, we want to do a book CD, and how about the, the kids in Canada sing it, and you guys sing it as soloists, and we put this together and record it in Canada and a CD, and we we do this collaboration with the publisher in Greece." And then it happened. It was very successful. Back then, it was only kids from guard, from uh, from uh, Socrates, mm -hmm. Tw 22 kids. That was it. And uh, we started with them. They had a great experience. We, we sang with the orchestra. The book uh, launched. It's it's still one of the most successful projects. I mean, it's uh, already in seventh edition in Greece. And uh, and the uh, the fact was that that was the beginning of this idea of a project that has last 18 months it and it has an artistic part and an educational part right. the artistic part of course is the composer the musicians the uh, the illustrators uh the professional singing in it uh, the quality of the music and the educational part is of course what you what these kids get out of it because you make it all in one and then we took this we did three more greek uh, children's uh, book cds and then after that we said okay how about we try to do this in other languages because like i said in the beginning our intention was always to promote hellenic culture whether it's music or mythology or whatever to the greater uh, to, to all canadians not just, not just the hellenic community so we did um we sent an email and uh, a, a very, very, uh, because I didn't know back then who were the Governor General award winning authors in Canada. So I went into Wikipedia and I found the five, five most recent ones. And I said, I'll send them an email and I'll propose them a project like that. And I said, maybe one will say maybe, and then we'll see what happens after that. It was yeah. completely in the air. <clears throat> Uh, and then all, out of the five, the four of them came back and said, When do we start? Yeah. And, out of those, <laughs> and out of those four, one, didn't just answer when do we start, but he even sent uh, a, script. A, skeleton, a script of the story of Persephone and Dimitra, right. Persephone and Demeter, uh, which is an ancient Greek myth, and says, how about this, and how do you like this, and all that. And then after that, it took off. Uh, Glenn Huser was that uh, writer. And then that was the first uh, book CD in, in English. It was very successful. We had big names participating from the Quebec. From the Quebec part, we had uh, Philippe Béat, which is a super superstar illustrator. He has illustrated uh, 200 books. He's got three Governor General awards. Uh, and then we had a, a superstar nar narrator, which was a total fluke because we, the, the, the publisher who was in, in Vancouver, said, "Hey, I was." Uh, 
uh, my neighbor in England was Terry Jones from the Monty Python. So oh, I yeah. asked yeah. him to, to, to <laughs> narrate this. And then we got Terry Jones, which is a huge honor and for sure we will forever cherish that. He did both books. He did both. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, so these things, I mean, you guys start these things from scratch or you have different people bring you ideas and every everyone kind of contributes their own way. Like you bring in the music part and then you have um, like the illustrators and like. Do, right. Yeah. yeah, we have we kind of a team. Have a, yeah, yeah, we team. have a team, like Maria says. We already we already know our composer who is going to be Yanis uh, Jorgandelis from Greece. And then mm -hmm. uh, uh, with Glenn Huser, we did two projects with him. And then Philippe Bea did the, the illustration. So then immediately we, we did that in French after that. So automatically four books. Uh, four years of work were all in all in uh, happening at the same time, uh, and then uh, yeah, so we kind of initialize everything, and then we we pitch it. Uh, our, our team remains unchanged. Basic basic people: myself, Maria, Yanis Urandelis in Greece, and then we pitch it out to to the different uh, to publishers that we've worked with before. Though. Yeah. Getting a publisher is very hard, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and by a fluke, I went first to an author uh, instead of a publisher. If I had tried to go to a publisher first, it would, this would have never right. happened. Right, right, right. But because Glenn Huser has had already his publisher, he pitched it to the publisher. And the publisher right. How, <clears throat> explain, you know, to everyone listening or watching, you know, how much work goes into a project like this? Because, you know, f on my end, it was... It was like a phone call. Okay, no problem. Tell me what you need and, you know, we'll, we'll make it happen. And then it was just a book that I had on my desk. <laughs> you know what I mean? no. Like I missed that whole in between. Um, tell me a little bit, you know, the, just the amount of work that goes into this kind of project. Like how long does it take? Um, you know, how do you, how do you go about finding all these partners, collaborating with people from all across Canada and in other countries across the world, uh, putting all these things together, working and finding, you know, great individuals to participate and to take part in this. Like, how does all these, these things come together? It's, um, it's a huge Well, process. we're not alone, right? We have, yeah. we're, like I said, we, we, having a team helps a lot. And, it, and it's funny how things branch out because we learn a along the way too. So mm -hmm. uh, even uh, from parents, parents gave us lots of ideas. For example, the, the actual launch of a book uh, was a parent's idea. And then the parents said, oh, another parent said, oh, I have uh, limousines and oh, let's do a red carpet then. And then, yeah. so it's funny how uh, it's uh, all these things branch out. So it's not only our idea. So having a team is great. And then you just see every, how a lot of people uh, collaborate and give us ideas. We can't, we never, most of them, all these things happening, we can't do it alone. Yeah. So, but the, the core is, yes, it starts from, uh, you know, the, the composer, the, the us, the performers, and then uh, then it branches out. Uh, but uh, Dimitri can give you a little bit more detail about the time frame of how, uh, uh, let's say, uh, to produce a book, um, as we explain also to the kids and families how it works. It's 18 months of very hard work, mostly from the part of... Uh of the Maria and I and the composer. The composer has a huge work to do. It's months and months of writing. Trying to write for an orchestra is, is a big, big thing. You have to imagine that you write a, a melody line for every one of the 25 different types of instruments. Uh, so that takes a monumental, like three, yeah. four months just to compose the opera. And then, or the musical, this is more, more in musical theater style. Uh, and then uh, auditions, auditioning in the big biggest projects, which was uh, the Lord du Panidas. We had we did 2,600 auditions to select uh, 450 kid choir that came from 22 different schools My God. across four different school boards, and mm -hmm. uh, and then you teach them and you find people to teach them. Uh, and then you, you continue, you continue, and then you go into the recording studio. You have to record into five sessions uh, in order to fit 100 kids at a time. You have to provide headphones for each one of those kids because you cannot have a music blaring and the microphone yeah. pick it up. Then you organize the educational aspects of it, how the kids will visit uh, Dr. Mark Corwin, who was uh, our engineer at Concordia, who's uh, chairman of the music department. 
Uh, and uh, after that, once the kids continue finish off the recordings and the soloist records and the narrator records, then you have about 300 hours of mixing and editing uh, to get the final CD. And then the publisher takes over, starts putting the illustrations together, puts the, all the arts together. Uh, face plates for the CD printing, all the all the legal stuff with royalties and stuff like that, and then of course you reach when the book comes out. It's the best moment. It's like uh, it smells good too when you open the yeah, box. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like fresh and uh, yeah. then you you start uh, September usually of the next year. You start planning the the launch. And that's a whole other thing. Media. Uh, press releases, you know, planning the kids' event because we want to thank them by doing this red carpet event for right. the limousines and all that. And then it was great, but, but it was it was fun, you know. We we were tired, but but especially when everything goes well, and it did in, in all the instances, uh, we had fun. We we going to the parliament, singing at in Ottawa for the first time. And, uh, it's a gift that keeps on giving. We yeah, say, yeah. you know. Because that's yeah. it. It's just all fine and dandy. We did this book, but we meet we meet people. We get all these experiences, and uh, like you were a part of it too, and uh, all these uh, achievements and awards and we'll blah, the, that was like the icing on the cake of <laughs> with this project. So it's 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 not uh, just not the actual book but it's a whole experience uh, that comes with it too you know so we're very lucky i mean that people were supportive and that's why we continue to do so and luckily we give ourselves a big time frame because it we have to remember we are a small team and we're trying to we are still performers and musicians but we had to learn um, you know how to be uh, what well, Dimitri would say, you know, I have to be an accountant or a lawyer and uh, stuff that we're not trained to do. And it's like we find ourselves uh, or a PR, you know, like calling up people. Uh, we're learning all this musical technology, too. Now that I, I'm, I'm sure you're getting through the same uh, learning curve with uh, microphones and mixers. Eh, George? Yeah, I mean, look, we, I had like a <laughs> basic understanding back in the day when, you know, we used to do concerts and stuff. Uh, but, you know, we always had like a, a sound guy taking care of everything, you know. Uh, yes. Yes, so yes, it was, yes. The basic thing was there. But yeah, to, to figure all these things out. I mean, yeah, there is a process. Um, but to go back to these books, how many how many have you produced uh, so far? Ten. Ten in total. Okay. Uh, and uh, the good thing about the books is that they remain forever. They go into the Library of Canada. They they are they are good. Oh, and by the way, I wanted to offer the Golden Touch and Time for Flowers, Time for Snow, uh, two pairs of these books for you for your podcast. If you want to ever do a oh uh, a giveaway, a giveaway. Oh, for, yeah. for sure. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Our, that's our a pleasure that's and our honor to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a fantastic idea. Yeah, we'll we'll do that. Um, so tell me tell me a little bit about you know maria you mentioned about all these things that you probably didn't expect to to, to receive or um to get because i mean obviously you guys you just have a project in mind and you're so focused on getting that project done because that's your passion but then there's all these other things that come right i mean tell me some of the you know the most memorable moments that you guys have lived or experienced with these projects you know like you talked about distinctions and you know performing on parliament hill i remember uh coming well, you guys at city yeah. hall uh i don't know if you've been abroad with kids T tell me tell me a little bit of, of that journey like some of the things that you probably wouldn't uh, weren't expecting and you had you got to live and experience oh maria you well, go the with national assembly I have mine award of Canada that you gave us that was, that was like the highlight of my life <laughs> really the, the, yeah, the, it the is, national it assembly is, right is, yeah. oh yeah. my gosh it is the single yes, most important was... distinction really okay. oh yes absolutely that that uh, yeah that goes before anything in terms of the awards that we've gone i mean we we were so we were always appreciative for people recognizing us and we got a deck award too we were very happy mm -hmm. about that and the nep mcc award from toronto and the sesquicentennial canadian from emmanuela labropoulos and a lot of a lot of uh, uh, recognition but this was very special because we we had worked together before Mm -hmm. You know, so to get it from you guys was uh, well. It, it was highly, it was highly uh, deserved, honestly. And it, it was uh, there was uh, there was really no, not even a question about it. You know, uh, yeah. But for me, but the yeah, most. I, I, yeah. Go sorry, ahead, yeah. Oh, okay. 
uh, well, that was like um, a award that meant a lot to us and also something tangible. And we have it displayed forever and ever and even the picture. So yeah. that's 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 something we cherish. And the picture you took from the... your phone, by the way, that was the best one of all. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry? The picture, that, the picture you and, took from your phone, that was the best. Oh, picture. really? I don't yeah. know. That's the one yeah. we kept and we keep putting on. And yeah. we enlarged it. It's on our wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, other, I mean, uh, like that, like I said, that's also was tangible too, but there's other awards. Um, just being recognized what we do. And uh, we had a beautiful experience in Washington. Yeah, Washington, D.C. That was in 2010, I think. And, yeah. It was the yeah, that was the um, the marathon um, celebrating two thousand years. Dimitri, was it the yeah, two thousand years? Two thousand five hundred years since the Battle of Marathon. Okay, and we were selected by the Greek embassy in in Washington to participate in the Euro Kids Festival. Wow! Uh, and we did uh, an interactive uh, fifty minute. A performance with the children in the audience, the, the Washington children, about the marathon, okay. singing and games. With and singing, yeah. That, you know, so yeah, that was a big, big, big thing too. That was a big and, thing too because yeah, these are non-Greek children, you know, in the states, and uh, we taught them the word. Uh, I said, look N at this N logo, yeah. the Nike logo. I said, that's a Greek word, yeah. <laughs> Nike. <Yeah. laughs> and they're like, oh, okay, you know, so things like that and just, just bringing that to their awareness and through music and Greek yeah. stuff. That, that was, um, but you see, that's because of what we achieved and we got recognized and, and, and as the Greek embassy, and I said, oh my gosh, really? So that meant a lot to us too. But also uh, for me, yeah. I got to tell you my my one of my projects that was deep in my heart. Of course, that that was that was a huge thing for me. I'm I'm an avid gamer, video gamer, <laughs> and that was one of the actually one of the things that brought us Maria together. Apart from music, because she's a gamer too. Okay. Uh -oh. uh, when, when we were in university, <laughs> we used to stay up very. One of our few vices that we have. Okay, okay, vices, so. yeah. <laughs> Uh, we would stay up very, very late at night playing online Diablo. Hey! Uh, Korea, you know? so, uh, I love it once. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, more than once. And then uh, we, uh, we, because I'm a, such an avid gamer, I never expected this amazing opportunity that came along. And that was to sing in and produce music for Assassin's Creed. Right. And uh, the last two Assassin's Creed that are set in the, the, the Assassin's Creed Origins was set in Egypt, but in Egypt in Cleopatra's time, whereas there's a huge Greek element. Absolutely. So I, I sung all, whenever you go into a temple uh, in the Assassin's Creed, all the chants that you hear sung by the priests is me singing in ancient Greek. Oh, okay. And then I also did some of the instrumental recordings they paid for me to go to Greece and I uh, got together with musicians playing uh, replicas of original instruments. Oh, wow. recorded that in Greece for Assassin's Creed. And then the second Assassin's Creed, the new one, Odyssey, which is all set in ancient Greece. Uh, everything that you hear, apart from the main soundtrack, is our production. Wow. We uh, got involved in that one too. She sang in it. Uh, she did demos for, for uh, Ubisoft. Uh, we did all the music that you hear the Greek sailors sing in the boat. Uh, we had to hire two Greek choirs. We hired one of Petros Plarinos, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Zakynkin voice. We had our own, own students to perform in there, giving them the opportunity. Perform in there. And then I, I went to Greece in Mesologi and uh, uh, supervised uh, the, the choir recording there, all the, all the, the stuff that you hear in the, war, in the streets of Athens and whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that was a huge. Wow. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Very prestigious as well. Uh, uh, tell me with the, with the kids. Uh, obviously for them, you know, memorable moments for them, but obviously this whole process of them having to, to go through this experience, right? I mean, <clears throat> learning, uh, how studio work, uh, functions, you know, the instruments. And like mm -hmm. you said, the uh, Dimitri, you know, the, the experience of, you know, performing with a, with a symphony orchestra, uh, f for these kids, have you been like, for example, uh, traveling with these kids? for whatever opportunity right like like going mm -hmm. to parliament hill have you guys been abroad with the kids at all no no hey okay no, yeah, we've no. never been abroad because uh it's a whole other thing to organize uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. playing a plane trip but uh the, the farthest we've gone was to ottawa okay uh, with a group of children and now we're supposed to go to quebec city 
for the carnival of marvels and monsters uh which was the latest cd and then right as we were organizing it uh, the covid hit yeah. it was canceled yeah. uh, um you know, obviously, you you know these kids; they're they're really talented, right? And of course, you do, you, <clears throat> you guys do a fantastic job coaching them and preparing them. Uh, how many of these kids aspire to continue into music, or is it for them just like an, an after-school activity? You get all kinds, I guess. I mean, Maria is a witness to this. You you will get the few kids that were forced there by their parents, and you can see it uh, right away uh and uh, these kids do they eventually we urge them to drop out and we say please don't don't come here if you really don't like it you know we want to have kids in choir that really right like right right the vast majority of the kids get an educational experience unparalleled but uh but few of them will become musicians and we have quite a few actually that that have gone into mcgill uh and uh and done careers i mean uh students that were private students or that were in the choirs and that gave them the opportunity to open up and start doing these things our voice camp also helps with that because we get right. them into acting and to dancing and, and all that do you, do you stay in touch with these kids oh yeah especially through facebook yeah we, we're all there and sometimes we do uh, remember remembering this part we upload a video and then we tag everyone and, <laughs> yeah. well now we're at this point we were hiring our students to work for us oh yes yes That's wow point, for for yeah. what yeah. projects that you guys talked about yes yes for okay. projects, projects but for, especially yeah. for the voice camp yeah oh yeah yes wow. we had uh, a singer a student uh sing uh be uh, quite a few of them uh sing in uh, in our children's books as soloists and got paid to do it too so so yeah. they got their first uh like real job as a musician uh mm -hmm. yeah it's like us it's important it's like why hire somebody that you know we have students that are really serious about uh you know their music and uh, have them perform uh in the our actual books right yeah. so yeah what's in the works now what are you guys working on we're going to take a uh, a little bit of time to see what's to to wait until this thing passes now. Yeah. COVID-19 was uh put a stop to anything artistic, uh anything that involves big audiences and although it's it's a poor substitute to be doing through Zoom, you know, ideally we would have liked to come to your studio and be close to each other. Yeah. Uh that has affected uh, such a big part of life now, so all our all our projects were canceled automatically the moment this hit. So we're going to take about a year to to for this thing to to normalize or to stabilize or to go away or to, for the virus to die horribly, you know. Uh, and then uh, once this is done, uh, we were thinking about the book CD idea that um, we would like to start doing something different this time around. Uh, and what that means is that CDs, are, are, it's a very hard medium now to right. market uh, because of online. Uh, and uh, our, our, our views now are beginning to switch. We've discussed this with the composer and we want to now start looking towards a more on, uh, yes, we'll have the performance happening exactly as it is up until now, but the medium with which we, 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 we promote the music or we transfer this is going to be an online media yeah well it makes so sense looking, yeah yeah we're looking more into making a video uh, rather than a cd uh a video or even an animation right uh, we've got this idea because we'll, the last book children's book we did with in greece uh, uh that because this Toshigroti yannick was like the big publisher had also a tv station and all that we did we also did a, a video of it and it makes a huge difference when you have a video when you have something visual kids get really transfixed yeah you know and then and then you have this beautiful music you have the same kind of experience for all the children but then you also have a visual thing mm -hmm. to go along with it so that's where, where we're gearing slowly mm -hmm. i mean we're going to take our time to research it properly mm -hmm. find a good animation studio perhaps in montreal we've already we're already in talks with the nfb uh, uh to uh to to see how this is going to work uh, it's not easy. It's a new thing, but mm -hmm. we cannot stay always in in the old. No, I mean, of course yeah. you have to evolve. Yeah, yeah exactly. and I was going to ask you actually how things, you know, following this whole pandemic, have evolved or you know, 
uh, are planning to evolve for you, you know, like all the projects going forward, uh, you know, at least in the near future, you know, look, mm-hmm. I'm hopeful that things are going to go back to what they were. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's funny that you mentioned, you know, what you're planning, because I was, I was about to ask you, how, how are you going to continue to produce these kinds of projects, right? All the, uh, I guess the recordings, the rehearsals, all these live performances, that can't change, right? So you're pretty much stuck waiting for everything to, to come back to normal. Exactly. But, yeah, um, we're, what, you know, yeah, but we're limited. We continue, yeah. Sorry, Maria, go ahead. No, that's true. I mean, we're, we are limited, but the beauty of technology, yes, we could do something. And I mean, with, uh, with technology uh, uh, sending as MP3 files, the songs, the recordings, the kids can learn it by themselves individually, the songs, and, uh, and then we hear them back and uh, we can compile a video together yeah. it's it's more work it's a different platform using uh, this you know technology but uh it's something we can con- we surely can consider doing using because we have we're used to technology now for sure our voice yeah. camp is going on we just have less kids and they're going to be socially distanced in the community center and in laval junior academy in laval uh instead of having 80 kids we have 25 kids this year uh, so they're going to be social distance, the choreography is adapted, the dancing is adapted, the, the, the singing, all that. And the performance will be a Facebook performance, uh, mm-hmm. which the parents will not be in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as far as the, what the new year brings in September, I don't know if we're going to be able to do choirs yet. Uh, but what we will continue for sure, and everybody wants to do, is a private lessons. And the private lessons have taken a whole different, can very easily social distance in the two studios we have. And the kids like to do video clips of their songs and we post them mm-hmm. and everyone, they, they reach a very, very big audience like that. So it's a very nice substitute, which we will keep, by mm-hmm. the way, even when things come back to normal. Uh, the, book, so, the books, you're still going to make books, right? I mean, there's something about actually holding a physical, you know, like physically holding a book, right? I mean, yeah, we yeah. like that too. We, 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 we like I, I, we Yeah, like I it. love hard copy books. I'm, I'm old school. I don't, I don't have Kindle. I don't like, I don't like to read electronically. I mean, just that light and I don't, so I like the smell of books. I like to hold, like, you're so right. That hopefully will never change. Maybe instead of a CD, that's our only problem now. People don't have CD players anymore. Everything is, uh, it has to be like an online thing probably. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we yeah, can like have the next book a, could be without yeah. the CD. It could be a, a code, or it could be something that you get it online. Exactly. And there is a project now on 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 the works, and uh, it. I'm going to tell you just a very small idea of what it's going to be, uh, and that is, uh, it's a very cool idea. It's it all takes place on on the on the on the head of a very dirty boy. <laughs> so, so it's 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 a story about lice living and having their village and and the, and the hair of a, of, a, of a boy that does not like to take showers. Yeah, that's fine. So and yeah, it's going to be a, a very very interesting project, and that's why we're thinking also animation because this lends itself a lot towards for sure uh, for something sure. more visual. You know, I think I, I, look, I, I think it's a, it, it's amazing, and obviously I, I can I can I can even picture right all the animation and all these yeah. projects. I, I, like I'm just thinking right now with what you said, everything that you've done in the past, had it been animated, and you know, obviously, oh, yeah. you, know, you know, we weren't there, but you know, just you know, all these old myths, uh, yeah. all these old myths that you guys brought back to life, and everything, and if everything had been now, you know, having. Uh, animated them and doing all these things and finding a platform where you can promote it. Um, you know, that, that it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. Great. <laughs> no, it was fun. fun. It was fun. Uh, guys, I know I'm taking a lot of your time. Uh, oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for doing this. It was, first of all, it was great seeing you and it's, uh, it's always, Take a, care. Uh, to, to, to see you guys and to talk to you. I don't know when things are going to go back to normal, but I, you know, and I say this with a lot of people that I meet either through zoom or, you know, a lot of people that I've been calling and, you know, talking with, I'm just looking forward to, um, uh, to being able to just, you know, see people face to face and hug them yeah. and, hug, and yeah, kiss them course. and, uh, just, uh, get back to normal, man. And, uh, yeah. hopefully, hopefully soon we'll be able to, uh, to see each other and, uh, you'll be able to put on a show for us again. 
for sure. Well, even for this sure. for us, this podcast that you're doing is amazing. And to see you, you know, with technology, yeah. we're blessed with that at least. So yeah. we're not completely withdrawal, you know, from yeah, people. It's so. complete withdrawal. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so very much, George. And let me Thank know you. what uh, what you how you want me to get the books to you. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, absolutely. We'll figure we'll figure, figure out how to do that you know. uh, that giveaway, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll put it out there, and uh, we'll give some people Thank you. Uh, the chance to 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 get to see exactly what you guys have uh, accomplished and produced, and to hold these uh, these great uh, pieces of work in their hands. Thank so you. Much, Congratulations George. to you too. Your wonderful podcast best, you're thing. doing. I and then lighting everyone here. So <laughs> keep up the good work, George. Thanks so <laughs> and much, George. Hugs and kisses to the girls. <laughs> I will, for sure. I'll see you guys soon. Sure. Can't wait. Bye. Bye. Bye.